Welcome to Play by Play Podcast, your passport to untold stories of the beautiful game. My name is Patrick Bergman. And my name is Ahmed Ehrim. This is where we're going to tell you about all the untold stories of the beautiful game inside the football and outside the football plays abroad and within the UK, within the game and outside the game, including business. Fix your eyebrows. Let's go, let's go. Izzy, welcome to Play by Play Podcast. How's life? I'm good. Life is a bit um, like a roller coaster right now, especially when you go from the pitch to the sideline. It's a bit of adjusting, but it goes well. So that's that's all right. Well, we love to hear. Yeah, we would so, love to hear hear your story about how you ended up in the, on the sideline. So just walk us through. Yeah, it's a, it's a crazy story, actually. But like... It's always the dream of every player to eventually end up in playing in a stadium, as always. Always something will happen where you all could have done something about it because it's coming from your side. For example, I had problems with discipline or I had a problem where I thought I knew better than the coach, which 75 to 8% of the time was right. But obviously, as a player, you're not allowed to talk, which I did not understand at the time or I didn't want to understand. So, for example, when you play at my first amateur club, for example, they'd be like, okay, he's young, it's all right. Then you go to Ajax. In the beginning, they'll be like, okay, tough kid, but he has talent, he understands the game. Maybe we can guide him. One time, two times, three times, they'll be okay. Then they will talk to you because you have these um, one-on-one conversations with your coaches or uh, the assistant coach. And sometimes um, they will tell you, like, hey, like, I know you don't have training today, but come to the club. And then they will talk to you, really trying to talk into you to, like, make their vision make sense in your head. Because at that point, your head is, like, all over the place. You should be like, yeah, I'm young. I should be the best player ever. You know what I mean? So, like, your mind is everywhere. But then at that point, obviously, you start to compare yourself with already players that are already in the stadium but then you forget the fact that they have already so much years of development and coaching, but these things you haven't been through yet. So you don't understand this or you don't want to understand it. It will take time to understand it. Even though the coaches will tell you have patience. Patience was always my biggest problem. So then at one point I got released, although I got taught so much stuff. Also in my way of playing right now. So what's crazy is, for example, at least what I've experienced in Amsterdam, yeah? Street football and pitch football are allowed to combine and it's even a deadly combination if used correctly. And for example, when I went um, to the UK, I had a coach and he literally told me like, I don't know what type of nonsense you're doing right now, but we're not allowing this here. Also at Durham City, we had Didi Akate, also at Carlo United, had the same coach. And he was like, yeah, hey, you're a street baller, cool, but not here. And for players like me that's kind of devastating because Mm. this is literally what identifies you as a player the technical ability the movements um, the flair that you use like obviously you can give like a very boring pass okay 100% passing rate perfect but sometimes you want to give that extra extra bit that when people see it they'll be like yeah that's him we know that it's his pass we know it's coming from him. He's that person. He's that player that that provide these type of passes, or he sees these things. And in Holland, I got a lot of freedom with that. Also in Cyprus and Spain, in Spain it's a bit more more strict because midfielders have this imaginary box where you're not allowed to move out of. And I'm a player that just walks everywhere, like. Your alpha instinct. Like, you could tell me, like, okay, you're number six, you're holding me through, you're seeing this box. I'd be like, yeah, yeah, sure. A few minutes later, I could be somewhere in the corner. <laughs> like, I just walk everywhere. Like, it, the, and coaches, like, hate it a lot until they realize that there's an idea behind it. Because I let other people cover my sport. For example, if I see that one of my players is uh, stamina wise not fit, then I tell them, like, okay, you know what? Just go there, yeah? Just cover my spot and I just do your work. Until that point, I got so much backlash where I started to do way less, but it was way more effective. So this is like where you grow up in your game as well. So that helped a lot. And also in my coaching career then. 
after I left Greece, which was, I think, a month ago, due to, like, betting scandals and not paying and all this type of stuff. Then at one point, you're going to be like, okay, you know what? I have half a year. The chances to get a transfer in the winter is, what, like, between 16 to 18%, if you be realistic. So I was like, okay, might as well go back to the academy I was playing at and then coach two, three teams. So I'm doing the under-14s, prepare them for um, the Algarve Cup, which is in March, and train on the 18s and on the 23s as well. And then play my matches as well with the first team and then see whatever comes up. So what I would say is, like, what did you learn in terms of, like, how to combine and get the ratio right between pitch football and street football? So, obviously, with street football, there are no rules. Like, you yeah. can do whatever you want at any point. And I will send you some videos as well where I do exactly this. For example, when I got pushed back to cent- as a, to centre-back and they said, like, OK, we want a footballing centre-back. All right. I forgot that I'm not on the pitch, on the, on the pitch, on the street court. I can't lie, it got really beautiful videos here. Yeah? But the coaches, I think, got bored after that match. They were bored after that match. The stress was not normal. Imagine you have a centre bag, which is not a centre bag. That's exactly the same type of stuff on the pitch against a pro team, which he does outside, like in a cage. Mm, yes. It doesn't make sense. And even the opponents were like laughing. It was like, yeah, he's crazy. Like, why is he doing this stuff? But when it works out, then you get the the label of the modern defender. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it has to work out. But obviously you have to understand, like you said, that's to be a balance where I think the balance is it starts with understanding how space works. This is the this is the first thing, which I always tell my players as well. You have to understand how space works. In order to understand how space works, you have to understand how your opponent's position, like the position of pass, how do they normally press? If you understand how, for example, as a centre-back, how a number 10 would press, they understand how you should move, then you can play accordingly to that. Do you know what I mean? Or if a striker, for example, like runs up in a boat or in a seat, they understand, like, okay, he's going to run after me anyway, so I can use that as uh, my motivation to start just rushing off. And at one point, the number 10 is like, diagonal behind him so he's not going to catch up to you mm. the two midfielders or the midfielder that's anywhere near you has to start sprinting while you're already on 80% of your speed so one little shift and you're gone so if mm. you understand this like the the way that you can create space and the way you can play around with space and play around with the body of your opponent that's that's the most vital thing so you mentioned you have been in Ajax. Uh, tell us how did you end up there and how long have you been there? Yeah, it's just you get you get scouted. It's very easy. And in Amsterdam, like especially at the time, like the amount of talent we had, because that was like raw talent because everyone was playing street football, and there was so much clinics and um, scouting days for young kids, etc. So you get scout and then. You have your trials, where they call it rounds at the time. And then after these rounds, then you hear like, okay, you you can stay. Obviously, as a kid, I can't lie, I had no idea what I was. I, have, I had no clue about anything in football. I just saw the TV, I knew Ronaldinho was done. All right, cool, that's it. If you would ask me anything about Van der or whatever, I would be like, I don't know who that is, bro. But besides that, you know how to play football, that counts, perfect. So then after six years, then you got released. And yeah, it was obviously a heartbreaking moment because at that point, like, you learn a lot. You learn a lot based off um, the way of thinking. For example, we play with a lot of patience on the ball. But with patience comes this this sniper vision because you're waiting for one mistake or you're creating a mistake that the opponent has to make. Mm-hmm. And you know how to do that by moving smart, moving in depth, moving with a certain type of speed at a certain type of time. 
And at one point, like when your team is like built as a family, then obviously you can smell where your other players are. Like you, you just make your passes, you make your moves, knowing that the other player does his thing correctly. The positional task has to be fulfilled in order to do the extra stuff. And once you understand that as well, then there's no worries. That's why I always say as well, I don't care if you don't know each other. If this is the first day you meet each other on the pitch, doesn't matter. You know how to play football. Do your positional task first. And then when that goes good, then you can proceed to do the advanced stuff. The one thing that I found with a lot, because I coach as well, is street football is the way coaches perceive them. They're uncoachable. Yeah. It's very hard to coach them to coach and they come across like, oh yeah, he can't stick instructions. Oh yeah. Um <clears throat> I don't know if you've been to certain teams, but like uh, at a certain age you kind of pick up patterns straight away. Or when it see when it before the coach explains the the drill, you know what the drill is, type of thing. But for street footballers, they're like, huh? Like they don't understand or like they they're like, just give me the ball, like, I'll just dribble past that, just give me the ball type of thing. Like, how do you coach coach it out of the kids and how what would your advice be to them? Okay, so street ball is actually it's at least for me it's way easier manageable because I'm a street baller myself, so I understand their point of view. So what I would do then is I would give them the freedom to do this stuff. But obviously you have to have set rules. So let's say you have like three parts of the field. The first third, play easy, one, two, touch. The second third, you can start playing around. And especially in street football, like you start, you love making triangles and like look for these through balls. That's yeah. why you're doing the third, in the second third. In the last third of the pitch, I do not care what you do. You can do backflip, shoot from any point. That's the point where you show how genius you are. Yeah. That's the point. If you can make that clear in a way that he understands it, so don't shout. That's the first thing that makes no sense. Like, don't shout at street ballers. They will hate you to the point they will start doing everything at any point. And now yeah. they're the same thing. So if you tell them, like, yo, look, the first third, easy. Second third, you can play around. If you can do your, your magic, do that as long as it's effective. If it's not effective, no worries. Make sure you have the ball back in four seconds. Just press like a mania. If the ball goes back to the goalkeeper, easy. Third, third, do what? I do not care what you do. I do not care what you do. That's your part. This is the part where I, where I just be quiet and I just look at you. Then you have to show me how good you actually are. You mentioned you have been in the UK, Spain, in Cyprus. And uh, can you walk us through how was it uh, football-wise and what did you learn in these countries? Um, so Cyprus was uh, when I went, when I was 23. It was in January of 2020. With um, There was another academy in Amersfoort with Kenzo Bio. Um, and I remember after a match, he just randomly uh, texted me. Like, yo, you need to fly there tomorrow. I was like, okay, cool. And I thought I had to do trials. And the president looked at me like, trials? I was like, what? Yeah, no trials, boy. Like, you're playing here now. Okay. Then the first training session, like, showed already the difference in level. Because obviously, when you go to a pro team, you directly want to show who you are. And the difference was so big that my motivation went from 100 to 10 directly to 10. Because I, I had the feeling that I could literally just go back to Amsterdam and play in the cage. The level was that bad where I didn't learn that much. Although the coach taught me, like, hey, I know you want to, pro to progress further in your career, but sometimes there's a part of your career where you have to play with, like, bad players. And it's not from an arrogant... Um, standing point but it's just the fact at that point and I'm like okay but I did not I couldn't contain that pain, uh, patience I couldn't I couldn't that just pissed me off I could give someone a free ball and the person just looks at me like yeah, what are you doing why well, that is a clear ball and I just like cuss the person out people in the stadium are like yeah he's out uh, calm down and I can't calm down because it's clear so that I had a lot of problems with combination play didn't work for that didn't work um, then at one point I went to England 
to Dorothy. We had Didi Akati as a coach. He was one of the one of them ones where, like I said, he wasn't too keen on street ballers, but he knew that I had qualities. So he was trying to bring these up to make me focus more on these. And he tried to do that with two touch. Two touch is fun where you do it off yourself. When someone tells you every player knows this positioning game, okay, free ball. Okay, everyone can do one. Then what we two touch, everyone gets pissed. And then obviously, like when you do that at one point, like you start applying the fun of it when you can do that on command. It's like, oh, okay, you're not actually a robot or a slave of the coach. You can adjust quick. So when you change that perception of okay, I'm not a dog, but I just follow orders in a in a way where it could be beneficial for me later, like you reprogram yourself, then it can be fun. And then at one point you start, oh, wait a minute, this is way easier. I don't have to do that much. That's like growing up in your game. Same when we went to Carlisle and I with the exact same coach literally a couple of months later. That obviously you play against like a bit better teams. And then you see like how beneficial it is, you know, for yourself. But when you like rediscover it, that's where you can find the joy in it as well. So... That's basically the, the stuff that I learned. But besides that, I always play like how I play. Like, if you would compare me to my seven, eight-year-old self to now, there is almost no difference. What's the... With two guys to, like, different... What's the difference that you see in between these different countries in terms of style of play, in terms of culture, in terms of... Um, what's the lesson that you learned in each country that you've been in? The first thing that um, every player needs to understand, every country has a different way of playing. They always have their own style. For example, when I went from Holland to Cyprus, that's a culture shock because there is, it's just they kick the ball somewhere and you have to find out what's going to happen next. This is where my lazy, lazy midfielder profile came up. Because yeah. at one point, you're not just rushing after the ball. <clears throat> you just wait. Let the ball come, and from that point on, you start dictating. Mm. But you still stay in one position because you know anything can happen at any point. Then I went to Spain, and there it's way more organised. The coach will tell you, ABC, you have to do ABC. Don't do D, E, F, or C, A, B. Don't do any extra stuff. Fulfill your task first. Once you do that, you can do your extra stuff. All of it has to focus on possession, which is beneficial. If you can't make, if you can't create a beneficial moment, you keep possession. Easy as that. And beneficial moment don't mean a oh, through ball or just across. No. Beneficial moments can be you create space or you slow down the game or you randomly just speed it up and then slow it down directly. These things, just to throw the uh, opponent off. And England and Durham, that was horrid. That was, I don't know what that was. That was just, someone kicks them, again, kicks the ball and then you find out what happens. Same story as in Cyprus. Greece has somewhat similar that's a somewhat similar mentality, just kick and rush. Carlo and I was more, more, they tried, they tried to like focus on tactics and it worked till a certain point, but obviously you have some players that would start doing random movements or random actions where you get thrown off as a, as a teammate. So you have to adjust, get adjust uh, you have to adjust it as well. And Greece was half off. They tried, but, at any point where there was the slightest bit of pressure, the ball would be in the second ring. The things that you learn from it is you have to understand that nothing is predictable. You can't predict you can't predict a game in these moments. The only way you can predict what will happen in the next phase of the match is by you slowing down yourself. For example, if I would just go rush after the ball all the time, I have no idea what's going to happen. Then. Because I'm just running left, right, up, down. That makes no sense. 
But the moment I just float down myself and I just stay in one space, uh, one 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 square, and I just wait. You see what happens. At one point, the ball has to come to you, and then from that point on, you can start like dictating the game, and then people start to understand like, oh, this is what you want, even if they don't know you. For example, the first time in Greece as well, the first training session, they were like, yeah, but who's this guy? But the thing is then as well, they understand that I'm then the person that decides what's happening. I have no idea who you are. You have no idea who I am. Never seen me before. But because you understand the game at that point, you understand how this chaotic football system works and you found like a glitch for it, that's when they feel like, oh, okay, you know what? It's easy just to let him do the work. Okay, mm. you let me do the work. Perfect. That means I'm, I'm the boss now. Mm. So you're dictating the whole match. Mm -hmm. And they allow you. Okay, so I would like to ask you about street football culture. Mm. Uh, let's say I come to Amsterdam tomorrow. <coughs> we don't know each other. I would like to play with top bowlers, with uh, Edvard van Gils, with uh, Tuzanis. How could yeah, I do yeah. that? How would you advise someone like me to to come up to Amsterdam and, and uh, conquer the street football? The thing is, what I love about like street football, yeah, again, it has no rules. So you can just literally pop up at any point where people play street football and you can be like, all right, boys, can I just can I tap in? I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. But keep in mind, if you would do this in the summer, for example, and you have like all of these big ballers together, like all the, all the street legends, all the pro players that come back from the season and everyone has that team, make sure you have a team or maybe you could tap in in one of these teams because you always have these uh, group of friends that are like missing one or two players mm. always so you can just tap in with them and just understand that there are no rules you just literally have the freedom to do as much as you want how you want to do it it doesn't matter and they will appreciate that obviously when you can see the goal you get cast out but that's that's a part of it <laughs> But like, for example, if you if you if you play in the UK uh, on the street, like obviously you have the freedom as well, but they still try to make it tactical for some reason. I don't know why. That's how I experience it at least. And I'm saying they don't care. They be like, okay, you stay like this. They give you the formation. After the formation, do whatever you want, as long as you defend as well. But. If you do your stuff and it's good, then it's then it's good. It's it's easy as that. What would you tell your seven year old self right now? And what have you? Do you have any regrets? Um, and if so, what would you have done differently? Honestly, I would just say stop bitching. If I'm being honest, because I was mm -hmm. I was always like just nagging, like always just like yeah, but he doesn't understand this. He does He doesn't understand that. The coach doesn't understand me. Uh, I have issues with this player. I always had issues for, and I made these issues myself. Do you understand? Because I thought that I was that guy, and footballing wise, I could become that guy at that point. Like I had the potential to be that guy, mm -hmm. but because my brain was already that far off, then obviously you're thinking of it. I'm with my head. I'm in the future, and at the moment, I'm just a little, little rat that tries mm. to make it somewhere. So instead of that, I would just think like, okay, just look at it day by day or week by week. Just don't think too far ahead. You can set goals, which is good. Mm. But when you set goals, understand that in the here and now, you have to work for it in order to think about the future. Mm. And this is the balance that a lot of people miss as well. For example, now I have a player. He is, I think, 30 or 12. And he was like, yeah, later, I'm going to be so good. Da, da, da. I'm like, okay, cool. But why, what's your goal? He's like, yeah, yeah, like Champions League. Uh, okay, cool. What are you doing right now? Yeah, I'm thinking if I should train tomorrow. Then I'm just going to look at you. I'm like, bro, I don't know who slept you on your head, but there's something wrong with you. They were like, yeah, but why? You understand that you have to train every day. There are people, there are kids that are younger than you train twice a day. They don't do gym or anything. Just let them just let them touch the ball from age four or five till age 14 let them touch the ball as much as possible I had that perfect so I'm lucky with that but then the mentality was not there well I would say 
like I said, day by day, patience. Don't rush to your goals because your goals are set already. You just have to go to them and just be more positive. Because, for example, if one thing went wrong, I could give like one wrong pass. My whole day, I could score a hat trick after that. Pissed. No one could talk to me at that point. Coach was like, yeah, but you did it good. I literally wanted to, <clears throat> I wanted the coach to fuck the coach to fuck off. Two weeks suspended directly. Keep in mind, you're a little kid. Mm-hmm. So, or you are either too mature for your age, or you're acting too mature for your age, or you're too real. Which means you just have to be quiet and accept what happens. If you make a mistake, okay, no worries. Which is time place as well. You can make your mistakes, correct it directly. Directly after. It's easy as that. But yeah, I think now I can pass that knowledge on to my players. And you see they pick it up slowly, but the fact mm-hmm. that they even pick it up, that's for me already a good stuff. In most cases on 11 side pitch, we use something called X-Factor. And usually it's the players that played street football uh, have this quality. And uh, I would like to ask you about your craziest football story you had in terms of on the pitch. Like, have you dribbled past five players and scored or something like that? Just, just, yeah, but that's uh, I'm sure you standard. have something. Yeah, yeah, like dribbling past players, obviously that's standard. Yeah. But like, because not standard as in like, oh, like a mess or whatever, but obviously when you're, when you go from you have certain qualities then it's easier for you to get past players but the craziest story I don't know I did I did a lot of crazy stuff because I'm, I'm my brain doesn't function normally like I'm weird but um, I think like the moment I enjoyed passing a lot because that became one of my strongest points Well, I gave like one random through ball, um, but diagonally um, to one of the wingers where that became a goal. But that was a random one because we someone shot the ball up in the air and then the ball came down to me, but I didn't realize it. And I just literally booted it, just kicked off. But I knew somewhere where the player was and I just walked off. Like I just walked back to my half, which wasn't normal. Then he scores, and I see everyone shouting, wow, yeah, crazy ball, crazy ball. And I was like, what are you on about? What's happening? It's like, yeah, yeah, he scored. Why? Yeah, because of your ball. Did it came? Did, did, it, did it land? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they feel like some crazy biscuit ball. <laughs> so I enjoy, I enjoy passing more than dribbling lately because it's funny like how IQ will always surpass speed. Mm-hmm. And since I understand this, I think I was 18 or 19 when I understood this. Bro, football is getting so easy. It doesn't matter where you play. You could play at what step seven or play in the Champions League. IQ will get you so far. It's incredible. It's incredible. What's your advice on players that where they can't do their street football, where they can't do the combination passive plays, where have to be um where they're basically the big fish in a small pond um where they're like their teammates don't have the same IQ as you for example you can't play that free ball they can't see it um to make that diag run on that straight ball or diag pass on a straight <laughs> ball or whatever. What would you say to them type of players to kind of like come out of that situation and get scouting and move up higher? Okay, so first off, I want to jump into one part that you mentioned, the IQ part. The IQ part is something which I struggled with for such a long time, which is, that's, it It got me at one point, like, depressed. Because for you, it's natural, like, it makes sense that the ball goes there. But then a the player will look at you and be like, what are you doing? Why would I go there? Well, mm. it's very clear. For example, on TV, when they will look at TV, they'll be like, yeah, yeah, but you should have gave that pass. I gave the exact same pass, we didn't go. Do you know what I mean? So then you get aggressive. And I get aggressive really quick when these things happen. Back in the day, at least. So, my coach told me, uh, told me at one point, you know that you think 10 times as quick as them. You think 20 steps ahead. Lower your IQ a bit. Action-wise. 
learn them how you play, and at that point do it again. Mm. Which means you are then the coach on the pitch. This mm. is where the coaching part starts developing. Because you have to make clear to people that are older than you how they should walk in order for them to gain a goal easier or to mm. gain progression attacking wise easier. Mm. And the moment that you can explain it like you could explain it to a five year old, that's when it starts clicking in the head and that's when you start mm. seeing that they start moving like it. This is how I did it, like lower your IQ first and then explain them and then do it. And then when you said, okay, um, when they can't play street football, you can, even if it's on your own, you can just train your skills. Just do the, just train the most ridiculous crowd skills. And at one point you start seeing that you automatically start doing it. Like it's at that point in your system. It does, mm. it, I swear to you, it does not matter if you've got 10 players where you can do 5v5. Five five. Or you're on your own. Because there were a lot of times where I was on my own. It was really people like, nah, bro. I got my PS3, bro. I'm good. I'm mm. outside. Just playing with myself. Sounds mm. mad. Just playing football with myself. And then just do my own skills. And then at one point, you're like, okay, wait a minute. I understand the skill now. But how can I use it? And then you start, let your brain work. Let your brain work. Let your brain work. And then you start figuring out, like, oh, I can do this as well. I can do this as well. So you're training yourself already. Mm. For that moment when it happens. This is also when IQ starts developing and you start seeing certain things which other people don't see. Because football is all about making yourself progress in any way possible. And I think mm. technically and IQ-wise, these are the two most important things I look for in a player. And try to carry your team. Like I said, because then you're the big fish. Try to carry them. And obviously, if you see, like, okay, it's going to be too much work, and you think, like, okay, wait a minute, I can actually do way better, be realistic with yourself, because a lot of, a lot of players aren't, then I would suggest to go to another club, which has mm. better opportunities and has bigger chances for you to get scouted at. Mm. But be realistic with yourself, 100%, because I see a lot of players are delusional. That's crazy. I know, I know, I know. I'm sorry for breaking the podcast. Just one announcement, Okay. Check out our channels on Instagram, on TikTok, on Facebook, Play by Play Podcast. Okay. Well, that's what I found. Like, when you dumb your game down, you, you elevate yourself a little bit. And then um, I've noticed I've done better when I've gone trials with a higher team or bigger club. I got better feedback and reference. And these low, low, step seven, non um reference and feedback. Uh, but that's how football works sometimes. But that's the thing. You can't you can't tell a black person to look at something. You have to think like this. You cannot yeah. tell a black person, hey, yo, look at that. The black person will literally ask you, like, why are you looking at the why why are you even looking? Why was that for weird stuff? Just be mm. as that. If you're a big fish, understand that people are you're playing with black people. Understand that. You can try to use certain senses of them, which means like certain skills. If you, for example, I had one we had a winger, yeah. Rapid, but retarded. He was actually retarded. Like, he was, his IQ was minus 50. That was incredible. You explain something to him, he has no idea what you're all about. I just told him, just run. By his side. Like this, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just do that the whole match. Every time, ended up being the top scorer. <laughs> That's it. You play with black people. Just tell them, do this. One task, mm. two task, max. Don't expect some crazy stuff because the person is fast or the person is... A crazy yeah. goal. Okay, we have two minutes until it cuts off. Uh, tell us uh, goals for the future. Uh, goals for the future. I'm trying to get my papers, obviously, for um, as a coach, for sure. And the academy that I'm at, uh, we're thinking about... Because um, the owner of the academy is now um, a scout and a youth coach at Go at Eagles. So he's he said, like, okay, wait a minute. If you don't have a club at the end of the season for next season, I will try to put you in there. So you can do your internship there and see how it is there in a professional environment as a coach. As a player, you already know what's up. I want to see you. I want to see you in that environment as a coach, so you can learn. Because obviously, okay, you have a talent as a coach, cool, but you have to understand from the big boys how that works. Because there are a lot of things that I might overlook. So I definitely uh, would like to do that. But for now, I'm. 
looking at the offers that I get for next season and we'll just see how that works out. But I'm confident that it will work out. For sure. You I'll see, you're you. the main guy. The main I'm, guy. I'm what? Main guy. Love. I'm doing my best, man. I'm doing my best. Okay. Hopefully you'll get something in the summer. I'm the same, bro. We're in the same boat, so. Wow, that was an episode. If you want to see more, check out this one.